All right, hello everyone. So it's been a hot minute since I've done a video for my workflow and like a tutorial for what I do. And basically since last month, there really hasn't been like a lot of updates in terms of my workflow. Uh, as far as uh, Stable Diffusion 1.5 is concerned, well, I basically use a pretty similar uh, negative prompt. The overall workflow is pretty much the same for the most part. And I do use After Detailer for fixing the faces. And I also do use image to image uh, transformation here using Hild Diffusion and Hild VAE to get the images to a 4K resolution. Now, um, in terms of the extensions that are required for Automatic 11.11, well, you can basically find all of those extensions under here. And you can find After Detailer, as well as Multi-Diffusion Upscaling uh, through the Extensions tab. And you could just install it. It should be very easy and should be no problem. Now, the main difference with my workflow is with Comfy UI. Now, with Comfy UI, I changed up my workflow a little bit. Um, now I am using a different SDXL model. Now, right now I'm using Joggernaut XL version five. I'm using the same LoRa, which is the Neg for All LoRa. Uh, it's the version seven. And it's basically a negative embedding almost. Uh, it helps with hands, it helps with anatomy, it makes things work pretty well. Now, in my opinion, Juggernaut XL is the best SDXL model at the moment for realistic type images. And it is better than the base model uh, from uh, Stability AI. Now, the benefit of this is that you don't have to use a refiner for it. And actually using a refiner kind of messes up the image a little bit. So don't use a refiner for this. Now, the other thing I would say is the overall steps, you do kind of have to increase it a little bit. The sampler name, I'm still using DPM++ 2M Keras, and I use about 45 steps. Now, the CFG scale, this is very interesting. Now, I've been increasing the CFG scale quite a bit. Right now, I'm playing around with about a number of 12, and increasing that typically causes the image to become very, very noisy, and look very strange but with this model it seems to be handling the higher cfg uh score relatively well now from here it's gonna go up to the top part here and it's gonna do the image to image version 1.5 model transformation why am i still doing that well that's because the uh sdxl model it's still not that great with the faces. So you can kind of see right here, the face just looks, well, strange. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I still have to do this basically because the faces, the body anatomy, the body details just still don't look great. And it basically does two passes. So the first pass doesn't change the image size. And then the second pass, upscales it to somewhere about like 1.2 to 1.3 the size of a 1080p resolution and i use about uh same amount of steps same cfg scale this part takes a little bit longer uses a lot more vram and i kind of use my uh, own uh, 1.5 model dream shaper 8 works great for this purpose as well so you know go ahead and use that and a new thing is something called face detailer. So there is a uh, custom pack called Comfy UI Impact Pack. And you install that and basically it works just like uh, after detailer or automatic 11.11. You can use it for other things, but the main thing that this is great for is uh, detailing the face. Now. So I have this really, really simple prompt right here. Cute woman dancing among wildflowers, large breasts and cleavage. 
Now, let's see what happens right here. So if I hit Q prompt, you now it's gonna start from down here. So you can kind of see the bar filling in. And now we have the first one right here. And this is the first iteration of the 1.5 transformation. So you kind of see from here, the face, the hands, everything just looks really weird. The background looks pretty good though. But, and then after the first iteration, it still looks funky, but overall it doesn't look too bad. Now, if we go over here, now right now it should be doing, yeah, it just finished the 1.5 upscaling right here. And then it just did the face detailer. Now, if we zoom into this, now you can see the face looks a lot nicer. And that is the uh, power of doing this image to image process up here. It's really complicated. You know, it looks complicated, but you know, it's really not too bad. I just keep the same negative embedding. I don't change this at all. The main thing I change is right here. And also this positive prompt down here uh, for, you know, this is the supplementary prompt. Okay, so I'm just gonna click Q prompt again, see what happens for the next one. Now, I really like Comfy UI because the interface, although it's a little bit convoluted and a little bit weird looking, it is very, very flexible. And you can do a lot of different things with it. Um, now, the other thing too, is that you can just keep on clicking Q prompt and add to the Q size, or you can add the number right here and then just click Q prompt and it'll just add it. Now with a stable diffusion uh, with automatic 1111, you do have the option of queuing, but it's not as flexible as Comfy UI. You can't uh, just cancel an existing work process as easily. Now you can kind of see, you know, the hands are screwed up right here. So let's take a look from the first part here. So you can see the face on the first image right here. That's straight from SDXL. It looks very strange. <laughs> And then the first uh, image to image, it still looks weird. And then after the face detailer and the upscaling, the face looks a lot better. Now, uh, the reason why I'm using XDXL for certain things is that the composition overall is a lot better uh, in terms of how the image looks. Now, if I use the same exact prompt, or just a version 1.5 model. So I'm gonna go back to the same one that I have right here. So the, this is a custom real mix that I have. And then I'm just gonna click generate and probably it's gonna create something similar. Oh, I have the seed the same. So let me interrupt that. And I'll random randomize the seed here and then click generate and see what we get. So overall, um, just with Stable Diffusion 1.5 by itself, I kind of feel that the uh, Stable Diffusion 1.5 tends to be a little bit more lewd in terms of the interpretation of the prompt. Um, so you can kind of see there's a lot more of the booba showing, a lot more cleavage showing compared to SDXL. And the overall... Uh, image right here. So I'm going to make the image a little bit bigger for you guys. So you kind of see that the overall image, it's, it's definitely a bit more lewd than compared to this one here. Right? So this one, you know, this one could be believable that this woman is kind of walking around in this outfit, kind of dancing among the wildflowers. This one is a little bit less believable. You probably wouldn't wear this in public. But, you know, this is the fun of uh, Stable Diffusion 1.5. You can just kind of create a bunch of weird things and it works just great. Now, in terms of positive prompts for Stable Diffusion 1.5, I tend to use something uh, quite a bit more complicated than SDXL. So, you know, sometimes I would just do this. But, you know, you could probably do something like really dress. Uh, blonde hair, bangs. Uh, let me just 
do, 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 blonde. Okay. Blonde hair bangs. What else should I add here? Make a night nice sky. Make a night. Night sky. Night. Uh, moon. Stars. Hmm. Bonfire. Uh, crown of flowers. All right. Let's 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 see what that creates. Okay. So you kind of see that now adding a few more prompts like this, especially using night nice sky, night, bonfire, things like that. You can kind of see that the image changes quite a bit. And in certain ways, the image looks kind of nice in terms of the uh, overall composition. The hand looks terrible, but you know, it's, it is what it is. Um, you know, you could also add things like floating hair and <laughs> why not add a car show in the background? Now, with uh, some of the Stable Diffusion 1.5 models, you can actually use uh, what, would you, what would you call like a uh, natural language for your prompts. So you're going to actually write like full sentences. It's not always the case, but some of them actually do let you do that. Now with the uh, SDXL, it actually works quite a bit better with the natural language. So you kind of see this here, the overall composition, it's actually not too bad. I don't know why she has a <laughs> wine glass right there. And there's a car in the background and you know, it's not terrible. Oh, it is, it was a weird glitch right there. <laughs> I don't know what that was about. All right, let's try the same exact prompt now in SDXL. Now, my guess is it's gonna be a little bit less lewd, but overall, relatively interesting looking. So, okay, you know, blonde hair, <laughs> what is up with her face? Wow, she is extremely cross-eyed and really deformed looking. Okay, so first image to image looks a little bit better. Okay, and let's see how things go over here. So while that's going, I'm going to change the prompt right here. So I'm going to make this dramatic, surreal, dreamlike, um, fantasy. So I'm going to add like these prompts that tend to change the, the realism of the image. So it makes it a little bit less, uh, real, a little bit less realistic overall. All right, so let's see here. So this, it doesn't look too bad. Hand messed up, of course, but you know, the face, the overall composition looks pretty good. But in terms of like the overall feel of the image, I kind of feel that Stable Diffusion 1.5 has a bit more of a, um, kind of like a fantastical feel to it. So I'm gonna try this new prompt right over here and see what we get. And I'm going to copy this one over here as well. So you, you might notice that I'm running both Comfy UI and Automatic 11.11 um, at the same time on the same computer. So, you know, I, I won't be able to do this in terms of like upscaling and um, high resolution type things. But for this part, it's not too bad. So you kind of see... With those added prompts like surreal and dreamlike, it makes the image actually quite a bit more like fantasy-like. And, you know, the overall image looks pretty nice. Now, if you look over here, let's see what we get with SDXL. Now, my experience with SDXL is that um, it kind of tends to make the images a little bit less surreal. So if you try to make an image that's not quite so realistic, so a bit more stylized in a way, in a way that's a little bit more like fantastic, uh, fantasy-like this way. It's kind of hard to do with SDXL actually. So SDXL tends to, especially if you're using um, realistic prompts, a photo realistic type of a style, it tends to make the images look as if it, it's, you know, real instead of something like this someone kind of almost floating in the air. 
Now, what I'm going to try now is increase the CFG scale a little bit more. So try to see if I can uh, kind of break it a little bit. All right. First one is going and it might be a little bit broken. The face is very strange looking. Yeah. But now increasing the CFG scale actually does kind of force SDXL models to make it a little bit more surreal like make it a little bit more fantasy like and i think that did help a little bit so you kind of have to play around um with the cfg scale quite a bit more i kind of feel like with sdxl compared to stable diffusion 1.5 and you know depending on what kind of output you want you just kind of have to play around with the prompts as well and in terms of prompts, using the same exact prompt for SDS Excel and version 1.5 does work to some extent, but it's not interchangeable. The image, the output changes quite a bit. And it could also be just because I'm using Juggernaut Excel. Um, actually, let's see if I have the regular Juggernaut here. So this is the older Juggernaut. So this is the Juggernaut for Stable Diffusion 1.5. Um, I'm going to see if that kind of produces anything similar to the SDXL. I'm kind of wondering if it's like the training data issue. Because um, the model that I'm using is very much, a, what would you call it, a, uh, a different type of a training model compared to probably what Juggernaut uses. So... Okay. Now this one looks stylistically a little bit similar to the SDXL in a way, um, in terms of the overall uh, clothing style. It's it's definitely more covered compared to the uh, the other model I was using for Stable Diffusion 1.5. So this one's a little bit more see-through. It's a little bit more translucent. I mean, and then this one is definitely more opaque. Let's see the other one. And overall, the um, it's it's quite a bit more zoomed out. The, the woman is not quite as much in the focus here. So, you know, I might probably have to play around with the prompts just to try to make it the same. But, you know, I, I, I just don't, you know, use that model anyway so I'm just gonna go back to my uh model that i typically use and go back to generate so if you use a uh, dream shaper 8 uh you'll get pretty similar uh results as well so i'm just gonna load dream shaper 8 real quick and then i'll show you what i mean by that so after this is done should be done in a few more seconds All right, here we go. And then, you know, this one's not too bad. So if you kind of see like just the comparison between those two models, there's a huge difference in the style. Um, I definitely prefer, much prefer this style just because it looks nicer. It's a lot brighter and the colors are more vibrant. So, okay. And let's see what this looks like. So this one is Dream Shaper 8. So Dream Shaper 8, you can kind of see that it's quite similar to the model that I'm using right now. Um, I think like the, the the feeling that I have with Dream Shaper 8 is that it's a it is a little bit more um, it is a little bit more safe in terms of kind of like NSFW type content. But I think the overall detail is quite nice. Now my hope was that the Dream Shaper XL would have that kind of a look to it, but that never actually happened. And the person making Dream Shaper is on hiatus right now and is in making new models at the moment. So hopefully he comes back because <laughs> uh, I really liked his uh, model. So I'm gonna try Dream Shaper XL again 
uh, just on SDXL using the same prompts and see if I get something different. So this one's on Stream Shaper XL. The hand is a little screwed up, but you know, the overall image and the image quality looks pretty nice. My only complaint with the Dream Shaper XL or the regular Dream Shaper 8 rather is that the face ends up tend to look a little bit young sometimes. So and maybe that's just the issue with that. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> so now with the uh, Dream Shaper XL, actually, we do create some interesting looking uh, composition here with the flowers flying around. So. You know, I'm probably going to have to play around with uh, both Dream Shaper XL and Juggernaut XL uh, sometimes. Mainly because, well, I kind of like this style still, overall. I think if I'm going to go for something a little bit more realistic, I might go back to uh, Juggernaut XL again. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see how things develop overall. It's kind of shame that SDXL really hasn't... Um, overtaken uh, stable diffusion 1.5 yet but in terms of overall quality of the faces um sd 1.5 is still still king and sdxl is gonna have it's, it's still struggling to kind of catch up to that all right so i think that's about it for this video guys and i'll see you guys on the next one peace